Ngoi TV, informed economist and business perspective. In the first place, please, you have to follow university-specific in-house style. Every university has its own style on writing dissertation, but also proposal writing, also lack of concentration on the dissertation. People don't concentrate on writing whatever they want to write. But also the length, maximum and minimum number of pages. You understand from Zumba, I think you know the number, follow the guideline. You cannot submit a dissertation which is 30 pages, which is 20 pages, and it's however good it will be. This is not a term paper. So follow those things, my friends. And I've been telling some of you uh, that there is no way I can accept this week because you have not, uh, uh, you have not met the, the, minim, the, man, the minimum number of pages. Language problems, lack of focus, you see, eh? it brings errors. We we'll say if someone is not focusing on the objectives, but also ignoring the guidelines of the, school, of the university is another problem. You have to read a lot, really, in order to be able to give a proper introduction and background and the context of this chapter. You have to understand issues. What some people do is uh, copy-pasting. Yeah, because I'm writing on SME, then everything on SME is copy and pasted there. That is wrong. Don't, don't hire writers, please. <coughs> Write yourself. You know, if you write yourself, you shall be given a task, maybe by UN or by whatever organization, international. You can do it yourself. Sometimes, really, it will be a cause just on literature review, on critiquing the literature. Yes, XYZ has said this and that on this matter that I'm writing. So, critique, give your own view, give your own opinion. Don't cite. Be flat for masters. <laughs> that is poor grade. If we be flat, for you, focus on A first, and then B by accident, B plus by accident. No, be flat. That should be your motto. That's why I'm saying after your findings, my friend, you should not say hallelujah, that's it. Go back to the literature and say what did the literature say? What are my findings are? To what extent are we speaking the same language? Don't force your findings to be similar to the literature. Otherwise, there would be no need of going to the field anyway. Is it good spelling? That's what you do, because that, that is a field. You see, eh? Because I've seen some people write per capita income. They say ca ca per capita income. <laughs> so instead of having ca capita, they capital. You see, eh? So yeah, it, those things have to be there, because I'm the language person. And someone tells me, but you're using a lot of effort. Why don't you put the full stop for me here? The master's thesis is not for me. I have mine already. It's yours. You have to know why the dot should be here, why the question mark should be here. On the research findings, again, you should make sure that now, on the findings, remember you are the emission guy. When you, went to, when you wrote your proposal, you said, I'm going for research. And what is research actually? He is finding out what is not known. He is covering, is uncovering that which was covered. So you have to do exactly that. You have to tell me, after spending those months in the field, after spending those months in the document, document from your secondary sources, from primary sources, what is it that you, you are coming with. So, it, tells, it, it should correspond. The way it should, should correspond on your study topic. If your study topic on, was on SME, and you are reporting on something that has nothing to do with SME at all, there is a problem. There is a problem, really. Again, it has to reflect to your objectives. You know, you, know, you had maybe three objectives, three objectives, specific objectives. If you have three specific objectives in the findings, I expect to see a report that tells me objective one was to find out X, Y, Z. In my report, this is what I found out. Of, after all, of course, they tell, tell you on the question of uh, personalization. I expect now you say this is what was found in as far as objective one was concerned. Objective two, objective three, etc. You also have to make sure that your, your findings correspond to all your research questions. After the objectives, you are the research questions uh, corresponding to your objectives. Now, in the report, my friend, 
I will, I will go, I will go. That's why sometimes I've been quarreling with some of you. If someone asked me, Malim, I wanted to send you the chapter on findings only. And I say, what are you hiding? Send everything. Send the, 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 the methodology to so that I see what we are the question. By the way, when you send it, I read from chapter 1 to chapter 3. Some of you get my comments at 3 a.m., 2 a.m., when you are sleeping. Amani, moyo na kona nda mbio mbio kusubiri ya subifike, wone plagiarism. Take it easy, my friend. So, <laughs> so, you know, every day I find someone to, to make a joke of. But on a serious note, my friends, please, uh, if, even if you resubmit now, don't think that I'm going to read the, the last, I'll read again from chapter one to the last, so as to see, am I seeing coherence? Do they flow? Are the parts informing each other? So your findings, for example, if you had the hypothesis, you had the assumption, you have to see, they have to correspond to each other. You know, are you confirming the hypothesis that you have? Are you confirming the, uh, the, 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 the assumptions that you have or not? And don't force. If you thought that all women, call it in one's office, are poor, and you went there, you find that, aha, they are rich. It should not disturb you. That is a finding. Come and report. Say, my assumption that everybody who lives in one's office in Manzese is poor, actually, this is not the case. We will celebrate because this is a new finding. It does not confirm your, your findings, but it is real. It does not confirm your hypothesis, your assumption, but it's a very important finding. So please, don't force, don't force, <laughs> don't, don't come with what we call a, a predetermined findings. Don't go there with the findings and then walk out to confirm them. It should be really the field that should give you really the findings. Again, your literature, you know, your findings have to, you have to relate them to your literature. You did literature review, you did not do the literature review for its own sake, you know. You did it in the context of your own work. So, in your work, you have to tell me the, your findings. To, the, to what extent are your findings corresponding to literature? To what extent are they corresponding to the findings of others who did a similar study? If you did a similar study, for example, on the effectiveness of, uh, uh, call it, uh, okay, on, on, on business environment, for example, business environment, and you say, the World Bank has said, you know, Tanzania business environment is X, Y, Z. According to TPSF, Tanzania Privacy Foundation, uh, business environment is good, is bad, X, Y, Z. And you did your own. Now, your findings, to what extent do they relate to the findings that you had before you went to the field? That's why I'm saying, after your findings, my friend, you should not say, hallelujah, that's it. Go back to the literature and say, what did the literature say? What are my findings are? To what extent are we speaking the same language? Don't force your findings to be similar to the literature. Otherwise, there would be no need of going to the field anyway. There would be no need of you conducting the study. The aim of study is to see, to get your own findings. And your findings should be yours. That is the new knowledge. That is the originality of the report that we are looking for. So friends, you have to understand that. Avoid being too general again, because now I cannot go into details. Maybe later my friend will give you those issues. Because I've seen, yes, this is a chapter on findings. You interviewed 100 people. You know how many said, for example, business environment is good. You kept on coming and say, uh, many respondents, many SMEs said, how many? How many out of the 100? And out of those, in terms of percentage, how many? If you just tell me 20 out of 100, say business environment is okay, uh, out of uh, 20 marks, I would give you less than 10. Tell me, this 20 is how, man, how much percent of the 100? That's how you increase the flavor of your report. That is the analytical part of it, my friends. So uh, don't be very general, say few respondents, few, how many? Give me numbers, because you did the study anyway. Because now when you're saying very few, very many, a lot, yeah, there is a problem there. So that's why when you're writing your report, I would say, keep it somewhere, let it cool, go somewhere. I do play basketball, go play basketball, go do something else, come and read it as if you are a third person. As if it's not you who wrote it, and try to see the unanswered questions in the report. See if this third person who has not seen the report when he or she is reading it, what gaps, what, uh, yeah, what gaps is he or she going to see, and let me fill them. If you tell me few people responded uh, X, Y, Z, I'll tell who, how many few? 
you sometimes you interview 10 you say one and if it's one how much percent is that and you can see the numbers that you are dealing with you can easily compute your percentages just with your phones of course your phones are sometimes are better than computers eh? but i think please avoid this uh, general uh, general statement